What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. I'm Jeff, this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Glen Glassaw Sand End. Stick around. Okay, so today we're looking at the third and final Glen Glassa. I've already looked at the other two from their new line. I've looked at the Port Soy, I've looked at the 12 year old. So this one should close out the trilogy. And the question is, is this going to be a Lord of the Rings situation where the third part is the best part? Or is it going to be a Star Wars situation where the third part is the weakest link? And when I say that, I'm talking about the original trilogy. Jedi is the weakest. Prequel trilogy, you're the best. Sequel trilogy, we need not discuss. By the way, if these Star Wars jokes seem shoehorned in, that's because my team of writers told me that pop culture references make me seem more relatable. Speaking of Star Wars, Sand End would probably be this guy's favorite Glenn Glassaw. Now this is one of two no age stated expressions from the new line, the other one being the Port Soy. And I would say that this and the Port Soy seem to be a little bit more popular than the age stated 12 year old. And I think that has something to do with the fact that even though they are no age stated, they offer up more intensity. The 12 comes in at 45% ABV, which I don't think is terrible. I'm, I'm cool with it. But the Port Soy comes in at, I think, 49.1%, something like that. And this one comes in at 50.5%. So it's going to be the heftiest of the three. On the whole, though, I think that all three of them are pretty well received. I wouldn't say they're blowing up, but I think most people agree that they are a step in the right direction, especially after the old line. Uh, and that, broadly speaking, they're pretty good whiskeys. Anyway, here's a blurb from the website. Uh, Glen Glassaw Sand End is inspired by the crescent beach of Sand End Bay where the distillery resides. Enriched in bourbon, sherry, and manzanilla casks, over time the lush flavor of Glen Glassaw Sand End brightens into waves of tropical sweetness infused with a crack of sea salt. So bourbon, sherry, and manzanilla. If you're talking casks with Rachel Barry, always three there are. No more, no less. So if you say, hey Rachel, what casks did you use here? Just bourbon and sherry? She'll inevitably reply, no, there is another. Damn, for a Trekkie, I'm going pretty hard with these Star Wars references today. Um, anyway, as I mentioned earlier, this is the last of the new line for me to try. And from what I've heard from some people, this is the one that I'm likely to enjoy the most. If we're talking about the other two from the line, uh, I liked them. I gave them both 84, so I thought they were decent pours. They were enjoyable. Definitely of a certain quality, but at the same time, not completely mind-blowing. I am hoping this will be an, a little bit more interesting, though. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into our review. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that would be greatly appreciated. For specs, as I mentioned earlier, this one comes in at 50.5% ABV, which is a good ABV. Uh, they don't tell us if it's colored or if it's chill filtered. I will give them the benefit of the doubt and say... Probably no on both, but I just don't know. So I do like the new bottles. I mentioned that in my previous reviews. I think they're a big step up from the old line. I like the bottle shape. I like the label design. I like the color scheme. It all works for me, so I'll give it a uh, four out of five. As I said, they don't mention if it's colored or chill filtered. They do give us some very basic tasting notes, and we do get a cast breakdown on the back. So not a lot of info, but... The bottle looks good. All right, on the nose, I get lots of vanilla here. I get plenty of oak. There are some sweet tropical fruits. I get stuff like um, pineapple here. There's tablet. There's salted butter. There's caramel. There's lemons in here. There's tangerines. It's quite fruity, coastal, thick, sweet, and buttery. It's a nice nose. Okay, on the palate and finish, this gives us a mouth coating and very thick texture. I get waves of butter and fruits here. I get stuff like buttered croissants with berry jam. I get Lyle's golden syrup on crumpets, possibly the most English tasting note ever. There's lots of floral honey in here. There's grapefruit. We linger on a touch of white pepper here, chamomile tea, and even bubble milk tea. Interesting tasting notes. All right, so I sat on this one for a while. I didn't touch on it for a long time, and I probably shouldn't have done that. As I mentioned, I did try the 12 and the Port Soy. I had them in pretty quick succession, actually. And uh, I also mentioned that I liked them, but I didn't love them. Uh, so it took me a while to circle back around to this one. And that's a shame, because this one's really good. 
And it's also pretty different. To their credit, with the new line, they give us three very different whiskeys, and I think each of those whiskeys will appeal to a different audience, demographic, whatever. Uh, so if you're looking for the sweetened peat, you might go for the port soy. If you're looking for more of an all-round traditional Highland profile, I think the 12 would be a good pick. And if you want something that's coastal and buttery, this is the one for you. And unsurprisingly, to those of you who know me and you watch the channel, uh, this one is more my speed. This is the kind of whiskey that I enjoy. Uh, you know I'm a sucker for coastal whiskeys, and I also like very buttery whiskeys. You don't often see coastal and buttery come together like this. That's a fun combo. For example, I do like the new Old Pulteney line, uh, but they do not compare to these ones. And I submit to you that these whiskeys were peak buttery coastal. Uh, sadly, not around anymore. They were discontinued a few years back, but I, I have very fond memories of these ones. And if you try them back in the day, you probably do too. And yeah, this one does kind of go in a similar direction. Now, granted, it's not these, but it is really good. And uh, as it's more my style, I do like it more than the 12 and the Port Soy. This is my favorite from the new line. I think this has a very good texture. I think it's wonderfully rich and thick. And of course, the generous ABV helps with all of those things. And I also think the cask play is very good here. Funny enough, it's the bourbon casks here that come on heavier than the sherry and the manzanilla. I think all the casks here play their part well, and I think, broadly speaking, they're pretty well integrated. Uh, but yeah, it does seem like the bourbon comes on the strongest. Plenty of influence from the cask, but it doesn't feel heavy. It's not weighing things down, and I think they add some nice flavors in a balanced and reasonably measured way. Uh, on top of that, I like the sweetness here. It is sweet, but it's not too sweet. Great flavors here with lots of florals, those buttered croissants, some tropical fruits, there's grapefruit, there's lots of tea notes in here, chamomile tea. It's a lot of fun, and it's just a very well-executed whiskey. Maybe not mind-blowing, but damn good. So this one is not just the best from the lot, it's the best from the lot by a good measure. And even if we're not comparing this to the rest of the line, the other Glen Glasshaws, if we just compare this to other whiskeys in its price range, this stuff is very competitive. So I'll be honest, I was pretty surprised by this one. I think it gets a lot of things right. Uh, for score, I'm going high here. I'm gonna give this one 87. Uh, I think it's a very special whiskey and it's highly recommended. Of course, we do need to touch on value though. Before we do that, I do wanna quickly thank all of my patrons and channel members. Guys, thank you so much for the support. And if you guys wanna help out, if you wanna help keep the channel independent and financially sustainable, there are a number of ways that you can help. I have both Patreon and PayPal listed down below. Anything and everything helps, guys. And uh, again, massive thank you to those of you who are already supporting the channel. Now let's see if this is worth the money. Price-wise, this one is on par with the Portsoy in my market and just slightly more expensive than the 12. Uh, and I think it's better than those two. I paid roughly, it was just shy of 50 US or just shy of 40 pounds. And for that, I think it's excellent bang for buck and it's definitely one you should be picking up. Okay, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As I said, I've got Patreon and PayPal down below. And of course, I want to hear from you. Have you tried the new line from Glen Glassaw? Have you tried the Sand End? Have you tried the other two? Which one's your favorite? Let me know why. Uh, and finally, down below, you can let me know what you want to see me review on the channel. If you've got ideas for future videos, let me know all of that. And I guess we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.